Okay, so, wow. Um, <laughs> you are watching this video a full day after the Final Shape gameplay preview. Which means if you haven't watched it and you're a Destiny fan or you're interested in Destiny, I will leave a link to it. It's a short 30-ish minute gameplay reveal. Uh, and if you haven't seen clips, just go watch it. That's all I'm going to say. If you don't care about watching it, then I'm just going to give my thoughts here on everything that happened. And before I do, I just have to say the fact that Bungie was able to cook up all of this stuff in such a short amount of time because yes albeit final shape was already a finished product and scheduled to come out at the end of february there was only a few months that were added to the potential you know production line and in game de development that's that's not a lot of time at least I, I i'm pretty sure that's not a lot of time i'm not a game dev but you know stuff takes a while and they cooked up a lot, at least from what we were shown in the original preview. Because we just had, you know, new supers. We had, the, of course, the Pale Heart of the Traveler, which is just the old tower uh, inside the Traveler. As well as some Lord of the Rings type stuff that, that again, everything inside the Pale Heart, the, the environment, the setting, it all seems amazing. And I'm excited to uh, delve into it in a couple months. But... Man, now we have a whole new race of enemies to go over. So I, <laughs> again, I have just a few notes here, a couple bullet points to hit. And first of all, we have like the first flying enemy type that uh, has ever been in Destiny 2. And there are these little bat looking things that can shoot their guns and, oh, listen, listen. The, the power fantasy in Final Shape seems like it's it's fully just going to be, like, like immersed. And there was a theory put out there, and uh, I tend to agree with this, and this was my first thought. Because if you remember, if you were a D1 veteran in the April update that we got towards the end of Destiny 1's lifespan, we got a bunch of insane abilities, we got crazy uh, cosmetics, and not just crazy cosmetics, but we also got insanely good weapons. We got uh, adept versions of weapons that were in raids, but not only adept, these were exotic adept elemental weapons. You had Arc Fatebringer in your first slot, your kinetic slot is what it would be today. It was insane. You had, you had Smite of Moraine that was solar. You had uh, a bunch of older raid weapons. Like, you had like Abyss Defiant. Um, it, it was insane. They were all exotic. But again, they were all in the first slot and all elemental. And you're just like, wow, that's great. But now we're going to be able to gel light and darkness subclasses together with the new subclass, Prismatic. Now, some people have pointed out why would you ever use anything but prismatic and literally I, I i can't understand why you wouldn't you can combine the two best titan melee abilities in banner of war and consecration and literally never have to take it off because you're, you're gonna have radiant you're gonna have banner of war plus you have the ability to combine two potential exotics with uh, new exotic class items they steal this is Bungie's like, you know, they, they, they say they steal these exotic perks from the other <laughs> armor pieces, from two other armor pieces. So if you're a Titan, you can have Syntheseps and, and maybe Pyro Gales together. That's just an insane combo. I mean, you're going to be doing so much damage. And I'm interested to see really if the activities in the final shape will scale up to that level of power creep, because let's be honest what we're getting in the final shape is insane. I mean, on Hunter, you could you could combine like six Coyote and uh, Caliban's hands. I mean, there's so many combinations out there that it's just fun to think about. And again, that power fantasy. If you watch anime, you know you're you're literally going to be Todoroki from My Hero Academia, using ice and fire, and it is so exciting 
to finally have like the, the ultimate build crafting pleasure, which is just, again, being able to take different things from different classes entirely. And you're just like, man, I can put, you know, stuff that gels together, like stasis and solar or void and strand you know I, I i'm not sure how precise it's going to be if, if the combinations are going to be limited to only a couple of combinations but yeah i, I would assume that you're able to get you know s strand and solar and, and and so on you know and, and each subclass has its own combination it's not infinite but it's still really really cool to think about because you know builds do get stale after a while and again that does back the question of well what's the point of running you know just a regular solar build at any point after this uh and i guess we'll just have to wait until the final shape to to figure that out not to mention there's also this new ability that uh you will have you'll have uh while you're using these prismatic subclasses you will have a light and a darkness bar once these bars are full you get access to an ability called transcendence which just makes you OP. I think you have some kind of uh, animation that you do, kind of like an heirloom animation in uh, Apex Legends or like a melee animation. And you just pop off, like you're, you're just insane. So if everything in the final shape is, is there, um, <laughs> I think over delivery might be possible at this point, especially with how well received least so far into the light has been i think that we can safely say that bungie has bought themselves uh, back into good graces with the community and you know we'll see how long that lasts uh launch day for into the light was a little rough but you know it's it's kind of expected with the server traffic that was you know eventually came uh, to fruition because so many people are trying to log on at once and well, we know the Destiny 2 servers are made of wet noodles. So, um, there's a lot that, that, that happened today and it was overwhelming, but man, I am excited for the future of this game. Even if it's more of a short term excitement, uh, there are rumors. And again, take this with a grain of salt because I don't know if they these rumors are from legitimate sources, but, uh, apparently Bungie is working on a codename payback operation and the codename is of course supposedly for destiny 3 whether or not that is true we'll uh, we'll find out someone was pointing out on a roadmap that was released a little while ago that the final shape did have something coming out just after it that was also a large expansion but some people thought it might be destiny 3 who knows, uh, Destiny 2 was released about a year after Destiny 1's last expansion. So uh, I think if we are getting a Destiny 3, maybe we'll see a year of episodes for the rest of Destiny 2's lifespan. And then maybe sometime in uh, 2025 or 2026, we'll see a new Destiny game, maybe with it getting announced later this year. Um, you know, that's a lot of speculation, especially considering they just got done with the production of Final Shape. But again, the future looks bright. We have a little less than two months to go until Final Shape. And again, I am beyond ecstatic to see what what it's what it feels like. I mean, I, I see what it, it looks like. And again, I'm excited to to try everything to try all these combinations and build craft community it's gonna be fun <laughs> i mean it's gonna be so much fun it's it's good to see the community back in a good place uh for sure but uh, i hope they can keep this trend up to keep listening to the community and again not only keeping the community uh, in good graces but also just making the game better Anyways, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment down below what your thoughts are on the gameplay preview, and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me out a lot. A lot of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. As always, know you guys just watching this, 
I appreciate it a lot. See you in the next one.